Hello friends and welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. I'm here in my alcove where I do my writing. And I had a special request from a subscriber. He wanted me to transcribe some music off of a movie. Now, the name of the film is As Good As It Gets. It stars Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt. They won the Academy Awards for that particular film a few years back. In this particular scene, Jack Nicholson is taking care of a dog of a neighbor who's sick. And he's trying to befriend the dog, and the dog doesn't trust him. So he sits down at the piano, and he p plays this song called Always Look at the Bright Side of Your Life. It comes from Monty Python. He plays about eight measures, and at the last two measures, he plays this phenomenal lick. And it sounds like it might have been played by Art Tatum. And so this subscriber wanted me to try to transcribe it. So I had to use some software. I want to show you how I did this. So here we go now with the film clip. Here's the scene from the movie As Good As It Gets when Jack Nicholson plays the piano to encourage the dog to go for the food. So this is an important scene and Jack as a curmudgeon is trying to make friends with the dog and how does he do it? Through music. And we're going to listen to this passage and then you're going to see how I transcribed it. Where's the trust? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Tom. Always look at the bright side of your life. So there you have it. Once I've made the recording, I want to find the file on the Tascam and listen to be sure it's there. So here it is on folder number one. It's the second one. And so I'm going to just play it to be sure it's on there. This has a built-in speaker, so that's a good feature. Now I'm going to connect it to the computer using a USB connection. Now that I know that I've made the recording on the Tascam, I'm going to connect it to the computer using USB, and that requires storage. I put it to storage, now that will connect, and we see that USB is connected. Now we can go and port it to the computer program. Oh boy, here's my desktop. Too many files. Anyway, let's see if it's there. Okay, there it is. Here's the file. right there. So we can import it directly into Transcribe or we can import it into an mp3 converter and convert it to an mp3 file. Um, that's this one here. So we can add the file here. Oops. Okay, it's not seeing it. Oh, here we go. I can convert it to an mp3. Specify a folder where we want to save it. Let's put it into... Let's put it into, let's see, Libraries Music, My Music, and then we'll go to mp3s. And then we'll find YouTube. Say OK. Next step. We'll open Transcribe. Save this file. We'll open the now we want to go and find it. So we put in libraries music, my music,
MP3s. YouTube. And there it is. Let's check it out. There's the beginning of the scene. Let's go where the music starts. Now we can see it on transcribe. There it begins. So now we'll take it from transcribe. So on transcribe is a program that you can import MP3 files or WAV files or various sound files into the program and see them laid out in a graph here. You can actually use the keyboard down below to check the pitches and so on. You can hear it played and you can slow it down over here with the controls below. So the first thing that I do, first of all I make a marker where we're going to start. Now that's the starting point where it starts playing. Okay, now we got to turn the volume down so you have a volume control here. Now you can expand it like I just did there. You can expand the chart or contract it like that. You see, so expanding it will allow you to see more detail. Two of the great features about this program transcribed is that you can listen to the song played slower. In other words, anywhere from 100% to 20%. So that's quite a bit slower at 20% or even 50%. And also you can set markers along here along the graph to show you where the beat hits. So then you can line up notes on the various beats or between beats. In other words, where are they falling on the beat? So the first thing to do is to program that so you have the beats lined up and you can see the markers. So we'll do that now. I've set it for, I'm going to slow it down a little bit to uh, maybe about 85 percent so it'll be slower, it'll be easier to put the beats down. Now the way you do this is you get your fingers on the M and the B on your computer keyboard and M will stand for beat one or measure and B will stand for the beats like two, three, four. So here we go. Turn the volume down a little bit. Here we go. He's coming up with beat one now in tempo. Measure two, three, four. Measure two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. So uh, the interesting thing was, you see that it slowed down, but it didn't change the pitch. That's what's the, the uh, unique thing about this. So you're keeping the pitch, but you can slow it down to percent, 20%. So now we'll take a look at that, and we'll isolate one measure. Starting out, the first thing I had to do to transcribe this was to look at the first, first measure, you know, and actually the first chord. So what is that chord? Well. I had to figure it out on the keyboard, the digital keyboard, and make sure I had all the sound of it in there. In other words, what are all the notes? Now, this is where your ears really get good. So, here's what I did. I'm going to bring in Sibelius now and show you how I figured out this first chord. One of the marvelous things about having windows is that you can create two windows out of two programs. So the first one is transcribe. So I'll diminish that to one window on the page and then I'll bring in Sibelius, reduce that to one window. Now I have two windows that I can look at at the same time and so on. So now you can see I've already already created the file or the transcription here, but I had to find that first chord. You know, so here it is. So here it is. Now I can just, here's the amazing thing about this program, is I can just highlight the first chord like that. I'm just listen to it enough time so I can figure it out. So now, let's play that first chord. So you can see it's now, of course this is a computer generated 
so it's going to be very stiff. But you can see that chord now is an A7, but with the flat 5 in it, that you had to hear that flat 5. You had to hear that, that flat 5 in there. That's that note right there. Whoops. Do, do, do. Yeah. And then the next chord. We can move this right over and hear the next one like that. So that's that chord there. So it's an E flat 7 with a sharp 11 in it. Let's listen to that. Okay, so it's very mechanical, but it's it's correct. Now we'll go into the, the main section of the song that's in tempo. Anyway, I love Jack Nicholson. He's a great actor. Um, I kind of doubt that he actually played this, but particularly that run, I mean, it, it could have been Art Tatum played it. I, it was amazing. I can't play it, but I'm, I've written it out for you. But anyway, he sings it a little off pitch, but uh, I have, have it here. So we can listen to how he sang it and how I wrote it out, because I didn't write it out the way he sang it. I wrote it. Okay, we're listening to it at uh, slower speed here. Let's put it up to normal speed just to get... So we hear it. We'll go back again. Always look at the bright side of your life. Always look at the lighter side of your life. Okay, there's the lick. Now that's pretty difficult to figure out. But anyway, the way I wrote it out was like this. In other words, I wrote it from the original music. And it's going to sound like a computer generated but it's it's uh, pretty close to uh, other than the fact that he's singing the melody not cor totally correctly we're just going to play it and listen to it how it compares So there you have it. Now let's let's li listen to it. Yeah, there's the lick again. I'm gonna play that a few times just to get it right. Now how do I ever transcribe that? Well, you have to go to it and you have to work it note by note. Well, if you ever had anyone transcribe music for you uh, uh, from either a recording or from a performance or whatever, this was from a movie and uh, you thought they overcharged you well now you're going to learn how difficult this is this is to do but anyway uh what i had to do is note by note so the first the first note is here away, away. hold on <laughs> the volume right here we go always look at the lighter side of your life. now you can see that the beat is right there right i had it marked seven that was the seventh beat I mean the seventh measure. So now I have to figure out that first measure and I can highlight it from there to there from seven to eight and that's one measure now where the beats fall. Okay now you can't possibly tell from that unless you're a genius or you have perfect pitch and it, yeah, and you are a genius. So now let's slow it down to half speed and see what it sounds like. still not not that easy to decipher so let's go down to a third speed to like maybe 40 percent or 39 it's still not that easy i had to go down to 20 percent and pick every note one at a time and it's so distorted that it makes it even more difficult but then you have to figure out what the rhythm is so the first thing you have to do is figure out what note it hits on yeah so literally as uh, what i have to do here is i have to 
expand this as, as much as possible outward and slow it down so like note by note so like this is one note at a time go up a little bit. Let's try it again. See now I heard those as triplets. Da 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 da. Now where is it falling in relationship to the beat? Well see there's the beat line. So it's after the beat. It's after the second beat. So there, it's like a pickup of triplets. So there's a pickup note and then a triplet. So let's look at the score. There's the pickup note. Here's the triplet. Now you can see it, sound, it follows a pattern, and this is, I, this is an E7 flat 5. So there's the root, the third, the flat 5, the root, the third, the flat 5, the root, and so on. The same way up to the, the high E, and then back down again. And then it goes up to a high note. Now that high note is on the next measure, so we have to find that here that's right there okay so let's like listen to that so you can hear that this is hitting right there on beat one Here we go. three four one two three four okay it's pretty complicated, but uh, you know, if you use your ears and you can use this particular software to help you, I'm going to show you in the next version of this, next version of using transcribe, how to transcribe something a lot simpler than this. I wanted to do this for a subscriber that had requested it, so now I have it written out for you, and let's take a look at it and listen to it again. Okay, one more time, let's listen to the transcription, and remember this is being played by a computer, so it's going to be a little, of course it's going to be stiff. Let's get uh, to the top. play it slower. See how that works. Now I can really slow down the fast passage. more clear on this because it's a computer. Okay, so there you have it. Wrapping up, I just want to say this was an interesting project and you can see if you're asking people to transcribe music for you, it's not as easy uh, as you would think and it's a great way to develop your ear. Now I'm going to do another video where I show you a much simpler song I might transcribe it from an mp3 or a CD but that'll be later on. But I'm going to leave you with a quote from Miles Davis. Now Jack Nicholson in his acceptance speech for the film Academy Award he quoted Miles Davis as being one of his influences so here's a quote from Miles he said this nothing is out of the question for me I'm always thinking about creating my future starts 
when I wake up in the morning and see the light, then I'm grateful. So I thought that was a very positive statement by Miles, and let's uh, go home with that. So we'll see you next time around, and swing loose. Bye-bye.